The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Thank you, Steve, for two great hours. Of course, today being, what is today? Wednesday. Wednesday, Larry Presavento will come on straight off. Me just program all the way through the afternoon until 6 o'clock with Tom O'Brien. Wraps it all up. Of course, today we've got the Fed. <clears throat> so yesterday, straight after the close, we had Turkey an announcement. The S&P futures went soaring up 10, 11, 12 points. Um, you had the president's speech. Uh, and the, the third thing will be the Fed. <clears throat> the Fed speak today, too. I'm not sure they're going to be able to say anything. Um, basically, what we're looking at is that the tide has turned. And once the tide has turned, <clears throat> you can expect lower highs and lower lows until something happens that changes that. That's my stance at this particular point. And um, there's, there's a tremendous amount of effort in trying to turn the market around intraday today. We've come off the lows, the low of um, yesterday, the 27th, no, two days ago was um, 16, 17, 1767, round number low, and ran up in the 120-minute E-mini um, S&P to a peak D at 1801.25. I should have put a down arrow there, right? And it came tumbling down to the low of a couple of hours ago. And that was at 1768.50 in the E-minis. Yeah, that means that it had an 8.5 point so far successful retest of the left side low. So on that, uh, on that basis, that is a good sign. In terms of the diamonds now, I don't think this is what I've done. Let me just find it on the front page here. The diamonds, it went to a lower low, and that's not good. But it hasn't closed there yet. So we've got a little time. There's a whole I mean, the panoply of um, strategies that we look for. Um, go, that's a D. That's a trough D. Good. All right. There are the different strategies that we look for when the arch formation takes out the left side low and then either closes below or closes above. And there are different strategies. If it closes above, you can go to the left side peak at the, uh, the left side peak of no, notice, which is 159.14, the high of. Um, Four o'clock yesterday. Uh, we'll see um, if that's possible at all. This is a very interesting phase because when you've got um, right there, when you've got the tide changing, it means that all news. Look, look yesterday, Yahoo came out, which was it seemed like it was good news at first. It was up sixty-eight cents, then seventy-two cents, and now Yahoo is down two point eighty. It made a peak E top in the week in the uh, in the daily chart at forty one point seventy two, and then and and that was in the um, weekly with the close under the nine period exponential moving average that is almost certainly going to be a peak G top and in the monthly a leg E. I, one of my issues here is that there are so many stocks that their monthly charts made new highs in January, yet January is having one of the ugliest candles that the stock has had. Yahoo has not seen a range of 41.72 to the high and the low thus far in January is 35.02, uh, 35.01. That's a huge range, but it hasn't seen that kind of range um, since the good old days when it was tanking back in 2008. In fact, there's a candle right there in June of 2008, 27.08 high, 20.60 low. That candle looks very much the same. In fact, it's a little bit bigger. So um, this is something to take note of. I think it's very important that um, in the Dow made a high in December the 31st, the all-time high of 16,000, uh, was that 588? And um, it took a little while longer for the other indices to make their highs, the S&P and the Qs uh, and, and the um, 
and the New York Stock Exchange, I believe, let me just double check, shouldn't say that without double checking. And the New York, yep, oh, oh, the retest, that's right. It did make the high back in December, an alternate wave count of 10,406, and then failed on the retest H, that, that double top cup formation, the one that I call the dreaded, <laughs> not the dreaded H, that is the, um, uh, the drop bucket pattern. Uh, that is a peak E in the monthly, sorry, peak E in the weekly, leg D, and a possible, absolutely a peak D in the monthly. I'm saying that. The Dow and the um, NYA, the New York Stock Exchange, have made, we have seen periodically like at one June, the two days before the close of the month, it looked like it was absolutely certain that that month was going to confirm the peak, and then there was this monster rally. I just don't see anything here that can give us a monster rally to make new recovery highs. So let's run the numbers. Dow's down 104 at uh, uh, 15,823. Uh, the S&P is down um, 8.90 at 1783. The comp index is down 20 at 4,076. Gold is having a really good day. It's up 14. Um, the, I'm going to take just a moment to show this. The GLD is in leg C, I made a peak C, and it needs to go to 122.51 for a leg D. The weekly chart has got a strong leg A, oh, I shouldn't say a strong leg A, a single leg A from the 114.46 low, it's one of the weakest, most pathetic, and longest taking uh, leg A's to the upside. It'll be a peak A if there's no new high above 122.50 by Friday afternoon. I suspect there will be. But in the, at the moment, this is just one of the most pathetic rallies that we've seen based on all the other A's. Look, there's one A that goes from 130.51. Uh, back in the week of 19th of April of 2013, and that A at least went to 143.43. Uh, so that 143, so that's uh, 13 points. Uh, the one that went from on the 28th of June, the week of the 28th of June, 114.68, to a high of peak B at 137.50. That is huge, 20, 23 points. So this one going from 114.46 to 120, let's call it 122, um, uh, is, is kind of pathetic. So it's eight points. Um, that doesn't mean to say it can't go further. I'm just saying that right now, it's just kind of pathetic. But I'm expecting that there will be a peak D. Now, what's interesting is that the GCG14, um, has made a peak D in the daily chart from 202.30 to the most recent high of 1279.80. Uh, and even more important than that is that the weekly chart um, uh, has made, it did take out the left side low of 1187.90 back in uh, the week of the 28th of June when it went to 1181.40 about five weeks ago. And that says that Having closed above, without closing below the 1187.90 area, it says that it could take out the left side peak of importance, and that was 1267.50, which is done. Now what's interesting is the very next one is way up at 1362. I don't know if we're going to be able to go there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Today's a very important day. I, I think we've made the low of the day, and they're going to be inter intermediate term bounces all the way through until the Fed. I, I just don't know where it will close. In the meantime, let's just go on. We're looking at silver up 15 cents at 1965. You've got platinum up two at 1411. High grade copper is at 3.24. Man, I tell you, that that is going from the upper band to the lower band. And uh, the lower band says we are in leg D to the downside. Uh, the weekly chart is making yet a third cup uh, arch formation. That's the H that goes to an M, and then a continuous M formation. And that says, be careful, because copper could still go down to the 3, towards the 3.15 to 3.12 area, uh, if it continues like this. Uh, we've got a bonds up 6.30 seconds at 1.32. I've got the TLT. Uh, needing leg D at 107.61. If it does that, then 107.99 is probably going to be hit. Now, this is, oh, I've got two things going on, and this makes me a little bit nervous right here, and then we're going to take calls. And the thing that's making me nervous is that I've got an indication, my Chapman Wave trend gauge flashed a signal that says that 
within one day, we should have a quite a sharp move. That no, it's got a signal that flashes that says tomorrow morning we could see a little momentary dip to the downside before there's a rally, and that momentary dip is. I, the reason why I'm so a little nervous is I don't know whether it's going to come because through the Fed and everything, the Dow, which is now down only 93 points only, and the S&P is down 793, has a very strong comeback, and then there's a little dip, and then it rallies again. I only say that because we have a, a lot of short positions which have been working fan, really fabulously, and um, you can't take anything for granted. There's just nothing here you can take for granted in terms of the relationship of shorter-term moves. I do believe the tide has turned, and we're going to make lower lows and lower highs going through uh, February. I'm going to go to Dan in North Reading, Massachusetts. Hi, Dan. How are you? Uh, Dan, you there? Oops. Ah. Oh. I especially wanted to get to Dan, and I took a little too much time. Dan, I just heard you ringing off J.O. J.O. is um, iPath, Dow Jones, AIG, Coffee. Ah, let me just, for those of you who call, we've got, you know, just a number of callers that, that keep their call, call us here at TFNN. Do me a favor. Tell, tell the, um, if you need a real quick response, tell L, my wonderful engineer, that you need a quick response. And he'll type it in there, and I'll get to you. But sometimes I need to finish my thoughts. In that case, I took a little too long. So J.O. has gone to leg C, peak C, that is, in the um, weekly chart. And what is it? It's the coffee ETN. An ETN is not an ETF. Uh, it is made up of derivatives. So what we're looking at here is, I need to just finish typing this here. If you don't mind, give me one second. You made a peak. Let me explain the whole thing. J.O. is trading at 22.91, up 32 cents. You made a, a pretty significant daily low. This has got nothing to do with the weekly and monthly, which are still terrible chart formations. 20.37 on the 6th of November, and it goes to peak A, B, C, D. And D is where you can, you can expect, doesn't always have to happen, but you can expect a pretty sharp retracement. And what happens is, uh, 2198 on the 21st of November pulls back in a perfect A to B equals C to D. That's that pattern that really worked fantastically, going to the 20.71 low of the 5th of December. Then you put it in an up arrow, and you go peak. I'm going to put this in for your life. If you're looking at Tiger TV, you'll see how I work my charts. Very, very hey, simple. Uh, I'm back. Dan Sorry is that. back. Dan gave me a chance to do my work on the, we made a peak here, second peak D in J.O. at 2424 on the 7th of January, and it's pulled back to trough A, B, C, D. Nice move up here. Dan, can you hold on while we go to this break? Sure. Okay, I just want to, are you long? What are you looking, oh, what are you doing? What? I'm not long yet, but I want to go long. Okay, great. I'll be back with Dan, and I'll explain why the weekly chart is starting to form something far more positive than it had before. I'll be back. Dow's down 103, S&P's down 9. Be back with Dan and North Reading. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Hazel takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. Tiger Technicians are Dallas down 103. SB is down almost 9. And we're on with Dan North Reading. And we're looking at JO, which is the iPath Dow Jones AIG Coffee ETN. And it's trading at 2291, up 32 cents. Now, there are a couple of things that I'm looking at. I did quite a bit of work. Um, uh, just recently on a number of the commodities, especially the very long-term charts, and uh, coffee was one of them. And it fulfilled the pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower formation, coffee continuous contract, had gone to a peak D in the monthly. That's what I always look for, those Ds. And then it plunged uh, below the low that was made back in December of 2008. That was at 167, but it's, it gets smoothed out. So whatever that low was uh, on your particular uh, um, uh, continuous contract, it's th that's the month that I'm looking at. Most importantly, when flying by and it went down to 104 that happens to be a round number low but that's not that's a, not an issue here because it's uh, it gets smoothed out but it was this is the first time that if in the next two days two and a half days if coffee if the coffee continuous contract is able to climb i don't think it can but if it's able to climb it's at 115.80 it might take february but if it's able to climb towards the nine period moving average of 121 um, in the next couple of days, it means that in February there's a chance that for the first time you're going to see an upward turn in coffee. I like the action, potential action in the monthly, but you can only get that if the weekly cooperates. The weekly has made a peak C, 
And I love, I love if we had a close even now for the week right here, you're above the nine period moving average and it says there should be a uh, try for a high above 120 to 60 <clears throat> over the coming two to three weeks. Now I'm going to go back to Joe because that's the contract you're looking at. Now that would equate to, <clears throat> if I'm, hold on. Aha, there it is. T does the trick. And if there's a close above, uh, no, it doesn't have to be a close. If there's a, a penny above 24.24, that starts leg D. But when you're coming off the bottom, a leg D and then a peak D is not a big deal. That's actually, how else can you go to higher highs from a, a significant low? By, unless you're going to make Ds and then start a brand new buy, a buy mode, a buy signal to buy mode. So I like what I'm seeing here, but the day is only two hours into the day and I'm looking at a candle that's very strong by the end of the day if the, if the candle goes under 22 uh, 81 I'll say whoops so it's real tough for me to do so I have to go to the 120 minute chart and the 120 minute chart is showing enough strength for me to say it's managed to push above the 200 period moving average I'm gonna make the suggestion that you, if you're looking to go long, that you start a position right now at 22.99, but it's a smaller okay. position obviously than if you had bought it right at the opening today because your risk reward at 22.50 would have been at the low of yesterday, which is 22.30. You go one penny below that, and you want to go out. But this time you've got it's 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 a uh, it's a wider. Let me see 22.30. Uh, well, I don't know 22.30. So 60 cents, 65. I wouldn't give it a 65 cent stop. I would say you get in right here, 22.99, start a position, and I would put a stop somewhere around 22.70 on the day. Why? Because if it starts to pull back quite sharply and goes under the nine period moving average of 22.81, that's going to be a heads up to say, you know, maybe I'm not quite ready, even though stochastic has turned up that MACD fast moving average has to really turn strongly. But I like what I'm seeing, and all I can say to you is that if you were to start a position here at 22.99, I would actually add another small position at 23.21, which was the high of the 27th, which failed. And that long wick, that shadow, if you can close above it, that's going to be very positive because then all of a sudden you're looking at the candle of the 16th with a high of 2364. I'm suggesting that if there is a move now in coffee, um, that it's going to be fairly quick if it's going to succeed and go on towards a leg D and that leg D should come within the next two to three weeks. And that also says the 22.30 to 22 area is absolutely important support. You break that, I don't want any part of this coffee contract for a little while. But right now, I think there's, there's momentum, seems to be building, and it's holding without having it give the spike and give back, which is kind of what it's done a couple of times already. So, Do you think it's uh, worth maybe waiting until tomorrow to see what happens with the Fed this afternoon? I'm not sure what coffee is going to do with the Fed unless they need to drink a lot of coffee to be able to give the announcement. <laughs> now, I treat them as two separate things. I don't think there's a relationship. <laughs> it's a good question, though. So, a small a position. Lines, uh, just kind of out of curiosity. Wondering now, hold on. We've got the break coming. I'll take you straight off the break. Can you hold on? Um, actually, i got to run, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call you again sometime later in the week or something. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks, calling. Basil. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, is going up in price again at the end of this month. Andy's weekly newsletter has delivered multiple profitable trades for his subscribers, even including a triple-digit winner within recent months. Right now is a perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy will also be hosting a subscriber event on Thursday, January 30th, Seasonality in Energy and Agricultural Commodities, that you can gain access to by simply signing up for a free trial to Andy Heck's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. 
a 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, a free 60-minute live online webinar with Andy Hecht, which will be archived, and you lock in the low price of $49 a month should you decide to continue after your 30-day free trial. Offers don't get much better than this. Act now before January is over and this offer passes you by. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 8257. Let me just tell you this. Uh, you've got a question in the den about Home Depot. This is not peak, it's a leg. Okay, so I just typed it into the 10 leg D chart. Okay, here we go. Um, Home Depot trading at 77, 77, down 77 cents. How about that? How often in life do you come across something like that? Anyway, that 77, 78 right now is testing the low of 77, 70 made back in December. Was it the 5th or something? December the 4th. And uh, that ran up to uh, peak G at 82.54 with a um, two-bar reversal and has come down for the retest. The stochastic is at 11%, trying to turn. The MACD looks terrible. It's going to take a lot to get that MACD to turn. So the question is, I don't know what the question is, just uh, would, I do, would I do an analysis on uh, HD monthly, 261%. Yeah, you see, the monthly has had a spectacular move. You've got just your, your peak D in the weekly, right there and it's under the nine period moving average for the second uh, week in a row 
and uh, it looks to me like it's going to fill in that very strong pink candle from the 15th of week of the 15th of November. 74.93 was the low, 80.09 was the high, and my suspicion is that that low is really the target to the downside. And if it takes it out, the weekly chart, the monthly chart, which is in leg D has a really good chance in February of making a peak D. And one of the things I'm looking at here is it's, the stochastic <clears throat> is still at 89%. The unbalanced, unbalanced volume is turning down. But the relative strength and the MACD have for months, since the peak C top back at uh, 81.56 in May of 2013, they've been failing. I'm suspicious of this. I think that Home Depot, if you had a put on this, a 75 put, uh, my guess is that you'll be in the money three to five points when this finally expires on the third Friday of February. That's, I'm just saying that that's, that's the relationship that I'm looking at now. Even if this double bottom here produces a bounce, that's the reason why I said looking out uh, three weeks with a calendar if I can find one. Um, and that's what I'd be looking at. So any rally towards the it's a 77, 74, uh, I'm not sure it's had such a big move. You, you, you've got to expect some kind of a bounce. But 79.41 to 79.85 are moving average reversal areas that say if it goes towards that area and then makes it an H formation, watch out, it could come down very sharply. So I'm looking at this as going down further. And let's say that it has one to two points on the upside, three to five on the downside. Um, that's the way I'm looking at it. Now I've got Bob in Rumson, New Jersey. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm fantastic, Basil. How Good. Are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to find stocks that I think are rolling over and that have business models that may be rolling over as well. Do, can, you just remind, can, Deluxe. can you just remind me, D-E-L-U-X-E Core, is this the, um, the they used to make... Um, uh, checks and is this still the company that they used to it make? Is. It wow. is. Wow. Um, I, I wonder I know how know many people are buying movies. checkbooks. I know I still get checkbooks, but I I'll probably get way less than I used to. Um, but they would probably have all the other business uh, areas. But you know what? Well, the other they've business expanded into other areas, but the other areas they've expanded to appear to be crowded. They must be also pretty much the same thing: paper products. I'm sure. No, All right, let's just look. Web based products, but, but I, chart wise, based on the system that I use, which is your system, I'm liking what I'm seeing for a sh uh, short uh, entry. I, I'm, looking, I'm liking it as well. I'm just trying to finish up a couple of quick notations here. I actually, this is one I can't say that I had. I, I remember this very well. I'm trying to think why, because I think it was trading at 6 once, 1750, 1765. Way back, let me just look at a monthly chart. I remember a friend of mine talking to me about it, and he said that he's make, going to make an offer for the company. It was way back, way back. Must have been 80. Yeah, it was in the sixes at some point. Well, 82, 83. So anyway, it's had a fantastic move. Gee, well, what a pity he didn't oh, make no, his offer. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, here it is, and um, I'm looking, I'm scrolling along. The latest move went from the low of 2009. Uh, the, pr the stock was at uh, 6.20. Oh, it wasn't, no, it was way before that. So it went right back to 6.20 after having gone way in the 50s at some point, I think. So 6.20 back in March of 2009, and it goes peak A, B, C, D, D's where you expect a pullback, and it gets that pullback. April of 2011, pretty sharp pullback, and it goes from the 200 period moving average at 29.30 down to the 1750 area. That is a pullback. Starts a brand new ABCD, and now I've got it in leg F, and the recent high was 54.24. Let me type that in, 54.24. Now, that, that by itself is not good enough for me to say that it should come back down sharply or that there's a potential for a hat trick top but now let me just quickly do the the uh, weekly i say quickly because it won't take long uh, that's a b c d a b c that is a d right there and an instant restart d 
50 right there. I just want to double check. I don't want to make a mistake here. 3239, 3258. Yep. And now what we've got is we've got an instant restart right there. Put a plus sign above. This is in, uh, I think it's November of 2013. Maybe it's December. Then I go A, B, C, D. Goes to another D. I put a down arrow and up arrow, and here we go. See what happens. A, B, C, D, E. Very quick D to E is always a bad sign. And now we've got it at, well, we won't know until Friday, but this, I'm pretty sure something spectacular is going to have to ha happen for it to break from 48.93 all the way to 54.25 to... Uh, to uh, start another leg to the upside. Oh, I think you've got something here, and you've got a good reason for it. So, do you have a position at all at this particular point? I, I took a position today. Um, so, really, and, and would that be what you would call it? Is, you know, forty-nine dollars. We'll call it. It was okay, so would you consider that that's like a starter position that you would add to it, or is that the position? That's the position. I. I feel comfortable with it. Okay. So then what I'm going to say to you at 48.90, be prepared that it could have a bounce, and the bounce would go between 50.22 to 50.55. And then it needs to make an arch formation and start to come down, and then it's got to take out decisively the left side low of 48.08, and 48.09, the two lows that were made yesterday and the day before. If it does, and if it does that beforehand, that's even better. But I'm just saying, be prepared that there could be a one and a half to maybe even two points of a of a pop up here at any any stage. If for for this stock, it's had the deepest slide um, from 54.24 to the low of 50, uh, 48. It looks so like that's, it's being trouble. Yeah, that that's the deepest decline that it's had in the shortest period of time. It did have a, a decline from the peak that was made back on the 21st of August at 43.49 to the very serious low that was made at 38.12, but that was a very steady move to the downside, small candles. This is, these are the deepest candles, and it did take a very big plunge on the 24th, and that was with the general market. So I'm, I'm, I think you've got your eye on the prize here, but I just wanted to say to you, be careful, no, I shouldn't say be careful, be prepared that there could be a counter trend rally because this has been on the buy program, you can see for mutual funds for a long time. Now it's here's something time, else yeah. that, I, that I'd love to look at. From the, the low of the 8th of November to the high A, B, C, D, E, the peak E high on the 6th of December to the next low of 48.17 on the 16th to peak A, B, C, D, E with a, with a rogue wave spike on the 23rd. There's almost like a, a time sequence that says it's taken about the same time for each of the rallies. That says that breaking the low of the starting point of 48.17 on the 16th of December and closing under it says that there's a really good chance that if this thing takes out 47.81, then the low that your target low would be 4561 and that should occur within about 20 within about 21 to 23 sessions that's what i'd okay. be looking for quick question uh not about this stock about the chapman wave yes i'm curious did you ever consider adding a 50 day simple moving average to a chart uh simple i actually have right here um, I've been changing these lately a little bit. Uh, what I've done is I've got the 200, I've got a 50 day right here. If you're looking at my chart live TV, you'll see yeah. that this, <clears> the dashed gray it. line there is the now. 50. Yeah, that's the 50. Okay, you do have it. Yeah. I do have I it, but that's, the, that. but that's the exponential. Now, what I found is 50 is one of the, gosh, I'm not going to say the, the, the more useless. I'm just going to say it's the one, <clears throat> the one that, Hall and I, th I don't know if he still uses it. I love, I love this. I'm going to I, I narrate a quick story here. 
years ago, well, I mentioned Harlan. Harlan, Harlan H-A-R-L-A-N, is from, the, um, the, from Brookline, and he's a wonderful analyst, uh, and he often gives presentations at the uh, Boston Investors Group that I, I, I often give, uh, also give talks at. And he introduced me to, I believe it was a 32 exponential moving average, and I just put it on my chart. I've had it now for about two or three years. I don't know much other than occasionally I'll look at it. I'm finding that it is, in fact, way more important than the 50. That's number one. That's the exponential moving average, and I believe it's this 32? one right here. The 32, the 32, yes, EMA. Look at the way it's given tremendous support and then break down in the daily chart of DLX, which is Deluxe Core. Yeah. Sorry, folks, I meant, meant to mention DLX is the chart we're looking at. It's Deluxe Core, 4890 down 34 cents. That's number one. Number two is... Um, what I also do, and I've got it here somewhere in the background, is that I've got the 200 EMA together with the 200 SMA, the smooth moving average, because most fund managers, I, I venture to say, the majority of fund managers who don't do technical analysis obligatorily put in the uh, 200 period moving average and it automatically comes up as the SMA, the smooth. They wouldn't even know which one it is. It's the 200 to them. So I put them both because I want to know what people, the fund managers are looking at. I want to know what I'm looking at, which is a different one. So I think you're on the right track with the stock. Uh, DLX is a short. I, the only reason why I asked you if it was a, 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 an initial position was that I was going to suggest that if it did pop up, you could add another small position with a one point to very tight stop, and that one would Whoa. be that could even become a core position, and the one lower down would be your trading position, and that one would go for each target individually, and the core you would hope that this is going to turn into a monthly hat trick top and that DLX actually becomes a buy and hold for a good period of time as it actually goes to 44.82 and then lower, which is the nine period exponential moving average of the monthly chart. And you just go step by step. We'll see. Yep. But hey, Thanks nice time, entry point. Rachel. Nice entry Thank point, you. Bob. Um, I'm going to be Appreciate watching this. I'm going to be watching this with you, and it's so interesting that you you came across this in the business sector, and I'm coming across some really important stocks like CTAS, which we wanted to short. We, we it didn't pop up enough for me to short it, but this is a uniform. Uh, Sintas Core Uniform is one of the biggest in the uniform part of the business cycle. Made a peak F in the in the daily at 60.93, trading at 57.09 peak E in the, in, the, in the weekly, and leg F, just like your deluxe, leg yeah, F in yeah. the monthly. Now, if both, of these, um, if both of these pull back, and then they just find tremendous support, just a little bit lower down, uh, that would tell me to keep an eye on it, because maybe the duration of this consolidation will be less than I originally thought. We've already had five weeks, four weeks uh, in the Dow. I'm suspecting that this is going to land up going into March sometime, but we'll see. So, hey, thank, thank you very much for calling, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. So, folks, the Dow's down uh, 98, and the S&P's down 8. Now, this is, to me, very important. Let's just go through it again. One of the reasons, and I'm not sure that everything's going to work. I'm already looking at one particular uh, index having a nice little bit of a rally here um, because there were one or two earnings reports that were good in the sector, but it's still way below our entry price on the short side. I'm suspecting that this particular index, which is the IBB, is going to be a very important tell. Why? Together with the VIX index, if the volatility index, which right now is trading at 1715, made a high of 18.99 uh, 18 just on, two days ago on the 27th, I think these two things together are going to tell us a great deal about sectors, the market, and the volatility that we can expect and the potential for the downside and pop-ups. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just during the break, I, I mean, asked a couple of questions. One is about Toll, toll, toll Brothers. Um, both the weekly and monthly have got peak Cs. It looks like it wants to get to a D. Can it get to a D in this particular range, uh, time period, I meant? Uh, all I can say is that um, if, if it breaks, is a 3611. If it goes over 3665, there's a good chance that it's going to try to test 3693. If it gets even closer to 3693, I think it's going to go to leg D in the weekly. And I don't know yet about the monthly. The monthly is up at the 3926 uh, area for leg D. But if it breaks to the downside under 35 to 34.50, that's real trouble. So 
It's a tough one. If you're in it long, just stay long. Put it tight and stop. The other one was LVS about China. Yeah, China. You know, I've been talking about China for a long time. Peak E and LVS in the daily. Leg, uh, peak D probably this week in the uh, weekly. And leg D in the, in the monthly. And FXI looks just terrible. I've been talking about this oh, for ages since it made the peak E top in the uh, weekly uh, way back in December. So let me go to Alan Orlando. Hi, Al. How are you? Hi, Basil. How's it going? Very well, thank you. You'd like to look at? Just calling to check out your thoughts on General Electric. Yeah, you know what? There was a report yesterday that General Electric uh, email to had bought a million shares or a million dollars worth or whatever it is. Um, I, you know, that to me doesn't mean a thing. I looked at GE. GE has been one of the tells for ages when it goes up. And the general market looks weak. Be careful because the market's going to turn around to the upside. When it comes down and the market looks strong, be careful because it's telling us the market's going to come down. And right now, it's saying that the most important thing, we are not in GE at all at this particular time. I'm waiting to see how does it, it's on the 200 period moving average in the daily. I want to see how the weekly support at 2460 holds. If GE at any time in the next week and a half making peak E in the monthly if and the, the, the monthly technicals are just turning down in the stochastic and the on balance volume but the MACD is still strong the weekly looks very poor daily looks very poor I think GE is telling us that it's got a little bit more to go to the downside and if it does break the 24 50 support it's going to go quite a bit lower and um, so I'm not doing anything with GE but looking out if GE starts to turn the 23 to 22 area into a base of support I probably would want to go back long at that particular time hope that helps you Al thank you that's great so um, I, I'm totally wrong if GE suddenly breaks out above 2630, it's at 2545 uh, on a closing basis on the weekly. If it closes above 2630, 2640, I, I have to say, wow, maybe it's already done with this consolidation. I don't think so. I think it could have a little bit of a pop up to uh, 2580 area, 2580, 25. Um, 2610 and then I think it starts to turn around and it comes back down it would just be a pop up but if it closes on a weekly basis that's different hope that helps you yep I think it does thanks thank you very much for calling out so folks let's just go through this again uh, Fed's coming out they could do it doesn't matter what they say Bernanke farewell uh, you know who knows maybe the, the market's saying hey let's give Bernanke a decent farewell let's rally a little bit who knows all I'm saying is that the volatility index in the next three days uh, yeah, by Friday, especially Friday's close. If it closes above 1899, that to me would be a sign to say that the weekly chart is, is, is indicating that the volatility is starting to create higher highs and higher lows. VIX is in play. The market sell-off will continue. I do believe I'm in sell signal. Here, this is what I'd be looking at for the sell mode in the weekly chart because I'm in a sell signal in the weekly chart oh look at that we're very close if the uh, oh I've got we're in sell, I'm, I'm already in sell mode it's not yet Friday but it, we've broken very sharply below the nine period exponential moving average the MACD's if the if the Dow closes below 15,900 on Friday I'm in sell mode now in the weekly as well as the daily not yet in the, in the monthly. Hey, stay tuned for Larry Pizzavent. A great show coming up, I'm sure. And I'll be back tomorrow. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.